Chicago Bears playing this afternoon, and I don't know about you, but there's some leftovers at my house with my name on it. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. The only thing that was missing from Thanksgiving dinner was Pastor Bolton and his banana foot. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know you had somewhere. <laughs> well, I felt like I and my daughter walked in, and usually they come in and they say, "Daddy, you know where's the sausage dip?" No, it's like the band, but they don't even know his name. Banana pudding man here? <laughs> <laughs> but glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God to each and every single one of you. And I know God is in the blessing business. Yes, Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. It is what it is in life. But first we give honor to God. Amen. First and foremost, who is the head of my life. And to our Lord and Savior Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. And to the Holy Spirit, Amen. our comforter and God. I just thank God for the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. I, I thank God knowing the wisdom that He has in all of us that He will give us something like the Holy Spirit to be a comforter mm -hmm. and a guide. Yeah, yeah. To keep yeah. us yeah. strong. You know there's a scripture in the Bible that says, I send you out amongst the world mm, yeah. <laughs> like a lamb. Uh -huh. Can you do you know what wolves will do to an unprotected land? Yeah, oh, my yeah. God. oh Lord! Yeah. I mean, they tear it apart piece yeah. by piece. Yeah. Most of the time, when they begin to tear at its skin, it is still alive. Right. But God is sending us out amongst the wolves uh -huh. like lambs. Uh -huh. oh, come on, somebody. Uh -huh. I, I, Somebody, my, my, my cousin called me again this morning and said, why am I going through what I'm going through? Why am I faced with all that? I'm not that bad of a person. But it takes me back to that scripture. It's not about you. Yeah, it's about yeah, the yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's about being in a world full of wolves and you a lamb. There's no surprise that all of us don't come in here with wounds each and every yeah. single day. Yeah. Because yeah. there's always somebody just Tearing at you, tearing at your spirit, yeah. tearing at your money, yeah. tearing at your family, yeah. tearing at your morals, yeah. tearing at your back. Yeah. There is something yeah. always, all the time, tearing at you. But I'm here to proclaim that the year 2012 is not going to be the same. I may be a lamb amongst all the wolves, but I'm a super lamb. Yeah. I'm coming to kick yeah. some hell with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. All right, now. Yeah. Yeah. 
We need to be prepared. And one of the things that we can do in this thing while we're being attacked by all these things coming at us is to praise God and to thank Him in everything that we do. See, I'm all cool with Thanksgiving and coming together with family and friends, but these folks have no idea how good God really is. Thanksgiving has become nothing but commercialized. They don't even want to shut everything down so we can truly give God praise. It's about the more things that we want in our life. Folks are planning and plotting and scheming on Thanksgiving Day for what they're going to buy the next day. But I'm here to tell you that as a Christian, we can celebrate God every day. Not just that Thursday, the last Thursday of the month in the month of November, but I'm proclaiming every day to be a day to give God Amen. some thanks, Amen. some glory, and praise. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. It's about that thing we've been talking about all month. It's about that word called commitment. Uh -huh. See, God just has not even released me from this thing called commitment. What are you committed to? What is it that, 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 that you place such a high value on that you will almost die for? And I hear folks say it all the time. You can mess with my time. You can mess with my talents. But don't mess with my treasure. Mm -hmm. I hear folks say that all the time. Folks don't get an attitude about much things. But it seems like we all can get an attitude about this thing called money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, come on somebody, what are you committed to? And when I go back and I read the whole book of Genesis, uh -huh. I see that in that whole book, there's no talk, there's no need, there's no value placed on money until after the introduction of sin. So in other words, until man put his own system in place, we had no need for money. That's right, that's right, that's right. And that's why I have a problem with folk when they come in and that's all they want to talk about all the time is 10%. Or oh, you got to tithe this and you got to do this and you got to do that. If you're not tithing right and this and that. And that's the only 10 they want to talk about. You can take the whole 10 commandments and throw them out of the window and they won't say a word. But it's always a tenth of this and a tenth yeah, of that. Yeah. But I'm here to proclaim this morning that if you are truly committed to giving in the kingdom of God, 10 don't matter to nowhere. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I'll stand here and say that a giver is greater than a tither any day. Amen. Because a tither will come across a thousand dollars. And they'll look at that thousand dollars and say, you know what? Here's a hundred back. I'm giving this to the kingdom. I'm giving this to God. That belongs to God. But a giver will take that whole thousand dollars and say, I'm giving all of this to the kingdom because God is going to bless me more abundantly later on. And a real giver, if you truly committed to the act of giving, You'll give the whole thousand dollars with no expectations of anything back. Oh, Why? Because you just yeah. love God that yeah. much. Why? Yeah. Because you're committed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm looking for in the year 2012. I'm done with all the fluff. I'm done with all the stuff. I'm just done with church folk. Mm. I'm done with folk that just want to come in here and proclaim week after week that we're going to have church services as that, that are different, that, that no more church as usual is the mantra that I hear everyone saying. But wherever I go and whatever I hear, it always end up being the same. That's right. They all proclaiming that we're going to have church unusual or church not as usual, and it all has end up being the same. I want folk to come in with the primary purpose of doing nothing but being healed, saved, and delivered. Right now. I, mean, I mean, if we okay. can just get back to having church, just to have church, just to be around the saints. Folks don't want to come to church because they don't want to be around us. <laughs> That's right, Bishop. I was, I was up on the computer this morning looking at some Facebook stuff, and we had one prophet just out there going off about homosexuals this and, and this and that and liars in the church and all that. And I'm thinking, all these things that you're saying, my brother, I understand it and I support it, and I got your back on it. But there's a way that you can approach this thing that you can attract the body of Christ rather than chasing everybody away. Yeah, then just because you give yourself to God at that particular time doesn't mean that God is done working inside of you. Right. See, folks That's believe right. that once you get saved on Sunday, that the real Mike, the real you, the real whomever on Monday ain't going to rear his ugly head. It says that you're going to be amongst the wolves. And the biggest wolf that's in our lives most of the time is ourselves. Yeah. 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 That's right, Bishop. Yeah. But you got to understand this thing called commitment. you got to understand this thing called kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. See, when we get away from the church and start focusing on kingdom, things change. Mm -hmm. Our attitudes change. Uh -huh. So this morning, this morning I want to talk about
was thinking it, and I promised Sister Betty that I was going to do a series on exactly what we've been talking about, commitment. But I want to wrap up this month piggybacking off what we talked about last week. Amen. Amen. I want to wrap up this month because I want us all to have a committed attitude towards giving. Yeah, yeah. A committed attitude towards giving. So I want you to grab a sheet of paper and, and your Bibles. Because I want you all to write these scriptures down as we go through them. Because these are going to be the scriptures about having a committed attitude toward giving. And if we need some paper, someone can run into my office and get some. But I want everyone, again, we got clipboards over here. I want everyone to get a clipboard and a sheet of paper. Because I want you to really write these scriptures down and put them in your spirit. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give the ushers a couple of seconds. And as the ushers are getting around and getting the pens and the papers together, I want everyone to go to Psalms chapter 96. And we're going to read verses 8 and 9. Amen? Amen. I'm going to do more of a teaching today. I'm not going to do no preaching. I'm going to do some teaching today. Amen. Because I really, I really feel this is being important as we're going into December because we're spending so much money on Christmas and things uh -huh. and, and this and that. And I want us to get a very good understanding. If we need some paper, we have some paper over there in my office. Sister Betty, open up my, open up my grip right there next to the office. And there's a, there's a black leather thing in there. Full of yellow lined paper. I'm just letting have the Holy Spirit have his way. Amen. Amen. I didn't put plan any of this. We're going in a whole other direction. <laughs> amen, amen. Amen. Everybody with me? Amen. Amen. And we're going to be flipping through the Bible, both the Old and New Testaments. And I took the liberty of writing down all seven scriptures on the back of the board there. So if we start speeding up and you get left behind, that's okay. Amen. We're going to have some class participation with that. Go ahead. Rogers. Go ahead, Bishop. All right. I was, with, I was waiting for your approval now. Go ahead, Bishop. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to come out of the New International Version for this particular scripture. Psalm 96, verses 89. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring what? An offering. And come into his gates. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Having a committed attitude towards giving. It should be the desire of every child of God to want to know the truth about everything that's in the Bible. What is important for us to realize in this regard is that the reception of any truth depends on the attitude that the one has towards receiving that truth. We often tell our friends and our neighbors that they don't understand God's truth of baptism and grace because they don't manifest the right attitude towards God's word. But it's the same way because we have thousands upon thousands of Christians who have closed their ears to what God has to say on this subject of giving. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Everyone is so stuck up on Malachi 3 and 8. Where will man rob God? In tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. You can get the same brother that can quote that time in and time out and ask him to go over any of the Ten Commandments. He probably couldn't get the three of them. Mm. If tithing was such an essential part to God's plan and kingdom, my question is, how come it's not part of one of the Ten Commandments? Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. in, in, in relationship to worship, what God says in the commandments in regards to, to giving is what? Keep the Sabbath and keep it holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, he says, remember the Sabbath yeah. and keep it holy. Oh. Why? Because God made man in six days. And on our first full day with God was a day of rest. Yeah, yeah. But see, check this out. Man will have you thinking backwards. Mm -hmm. That we have to work in order to rest. It's backwards. So when we talk about this thing called money, and we talk about it from the perspective of giving from the pulpit, check out what some folks say. I don't lie when I give, I just don't give. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, the church, they got it. Ouch. Right, right, right. They got it. Right. Look at the pastor. You know they, you know they loaded. His wife don't even work. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. You hear it all the time. You hear, you hear the craziest things in the world. Yeah, yeah. But if people were to just get right now and get down to the truth of the matter, this is what they would be saying. I'm too selfish to give uh -oh. generously. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Sometimes when I go to churches and I visit around and I look at all the beautifully dressed people out there in the audience, I say, wow, this church, man, they full of rich folk. They are all dressed down to the teeth. And then when I get ready to live and they want to give the prophet an offering or a blessing, I go where all the church, where all the rich folk at. <laughs> you see folks coming in with brand new suits on, weeks in, week out. You can't see. I know there's some folks that will not come to church if they wore their suit once and it didn't go to the cleaners. <laughs> I gotta have the latest and the greatest shoes, and then when it comes a time to giving, they act like they don't have a dime to put into the offering plate. Those are the folks that I say that they're too extravagant with their money to be able to give generously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where would a man rob God? In credit card bills to MasterCard, Visa, and American Express. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yep. it. Amen. <laughs> My commitment to giving ain't there yet. This is what they're saying. That, that this is a truth statement. It ain't about giving. I tell folk, if you have nothing to give, if you paid all your bills from A to B, and you still don't have anything to give, come to church with a praise and worship. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Come to church and you open up your cupboard and there's a can of beans that's been sitting up there and you know you're not going to use them, bring a can of beans. That's right. If you're walking out of your house and there's a plant that's half dead sitting on your thing and you go, you know what, I, I, I don't have time to take care of this thing and I'm just going to give it to my church. Yeah, yeah. Bring an offering. Yeah. Bring a praise, bring a worship, bring a can of beans, bring a plant, bring yeah. something. Yeah. I look at the pictures that I received from our sister church in India. These folks that are the poorest of the poor in the world come to church and they still bring back of the potatoes. They bring incense. They bring whatever they have. And that's what I want to encourage us in our giving. I'm not asking you to go and dig into your pockets to give nothing that you do not have. Amen. Amen. I'm asking you to give what you do have. Give proportionally. So it's essential that we manifest the proper attitude on this vital subject. Giving as we have been prospered is a command of God. Quickly go to your Bibles and go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. First Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Elder Kevin, would you read that for us? Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Check that out. Commandment from God on how we're supposed to give. In that instructing, anybody hear 10%? <laughs> it says for you to give as you has prospered. That's right. Give as God has prospered That's right. you. That's right. Amen. Didn't say anything about a 10%. That means God has given you that freedom and flexibility to give as he has given to you freely and abundantly. And guess what this means? It doesn't say anything in there about us holding some bake sales, mm -hmm. candy bar sales, or out there begging the world to take care of God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that just gets my goat when I'm going in the, to Walmart or I'm going in somewhere and I understand the Salvation Army and the kettle ringing the bell. I'm, I'm cool with that. They've been doing that. And you guys all know that's where I got my foundation from this apostolic thing was with the Salvation Army. Yeah. So I'm cool with that. That's what I used to do. I used to be one of the bell ringers. Mm -hmm. 
I understand that. But what gets my goat is when I come around later on and I see some other folk out there talking about I belong to church so and so and we out here trying to raise money so we can go do this or go do that. And I'm sitting there thinking, what in the world are you talking about? Mm. Show me. And I, I, I challenge the brother on that. I, and I said, what you're doing here, my brother, is not scriptural. Mm. He just got an attitude. I said, look, if you can show me in the Bible where it says for you to do that, for us, the kingdom folk, kingdom minded folk, that we're going to depend on the world in order to do what God has called us to do. Mm. And he came up with that scripture where the wealth of the wicked is laid up, laid up there for us to take. That, 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 so why are you out here back and forth? You're supposed to be taking it. Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then the brother really got mad at him. Now I'm not putting down any ministry that goes and do that. If that's what God gave them to do, Amen. God bless them. I'm just not doing it. I'm not just doing it. I'm not a tarot card reader. I'm not going to have a fifty dollar line and tell folks that if you get in this line, God is going to rich you, bless you greater than if you get over here in the ten dollar line. Matter of fact, why should we have lines anyway? Amen. If you're giving according to your prosperity, Amen. if you're giving according to what you have, if you're giving a sacrificial offering, an attitude towards giving. Amen. Amen. And the reason why I want to bring it up is that quickly, I want you all to go to Mark chapter ten. Verses 18 through 22. I told you I'm going to be teaching today. Amen. Not a whole lot of hope in it. Because I really want this to settle down into your spirits. Yeah, yeah. Mark chapter 10, verses 18 through 22. Pastor Holton, would you read that for us? Unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these things I have observed from my youth. And Jesus said, and Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, mm. and give to the poor. My God. And thou shalt love, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven. My Lord. And come, pick up the cross and follow me. Mm -hmm. My Lord. And he said, and he was sad that, and he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, <laughs> for he had great possessions. Greed because he had great possessions. So I'm going to give it a <laughs> Some of us have the attitude like the young ruler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The young ruler knew about Jesus. Uh -huh. The young ruler wanted to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And the young ruler kept all the commandments. In his mind, he was doing everything right. In his mind, he had hit every wicked that he needed to hit in order to get to heaven. But Jesus knew that when he asked him to go and sell all of his possessions and give it to the poor, and check out what Jesus said after that, and pick up the cross yeah, yeah, and yeah. follow me. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God! So when the young ruler came by Jesus, Jesus knew that he placed a higher value on his worldly possessions than he did on his commitment to giving. All right. See, Jesus said, you've done everything right, but you are missing one. You are missing this thing called giving. If, and what I'm trying to get you to see here is that you can have the wrong attitude. Uh -huh. You can come to church and teach Sunday school. You can sing in the choir. You can do all the things that it needs to take. Yeah, but if you yeah. don't truly give and give freely and give from the heart, you are missing missing the mark. In other words, Jesus was saying, if you're not willing to give, you ain't making it into heaven. And he didn't say, oh, go back and sell 10% and come back and give to what is God and what is God. He said, go back and sell what? Everything. And do what? Give to the poor. And the God walked away what? Greed. Yeah. Yeah. Having an attitude committed to giving. Some of us have the attitude like Judas. Quickly, grab your Bible once again and go to John chapter 12, verses 3 through 6. 
kind of like this style. Mm -hmm. John chapter 12, verses 3 through 6. John chapter 12, verses 3 through 6. Elder Rogers, would you mind reading that one for us? Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, mm. and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. My God. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this woman sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? Then he said, that not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and the bag for put that in. My God, my God. Now check this out. Some people have the attitude like Judas when it comes to giving. Mm -hmm. It has been said that, that temptation commonly comes through that of which we are naturally fitted to have. See, in other words, Judas was a natural money manager. He had the skills of being able to manage money, invest money, and make money, and that's why they gave him the bags of money to carry. Uh -huh. But he loved money so much that Judas eventually became a thief. Yeah, and when yeah. he became a thief, he began to look and criticize all that was around him about this spirit of giving. You ever notice that you got some folk that's always looking at who's putting what in the offering yeah, box yeah, and in the offering yeah. plate, and they ain't put nothing in there yeah, at all? Yeah, they want to yeah. look at all the envelopes and see who's giving what and what's giving. And who and see I wouldn't mind that so bad is that if he saw who gave the most and he tried to top that uh -huh. but no he wanted to go see who's given the least to top that but then check this out not only that Judas was a thief he was worried about where the money was going uh -huh. why would she be anointing you and wasting all that money Jesus when we could be selling that perfume and selling those oils to go around and take care of the poor uh -huh. see those are those folks that are telling you that you need to have another fish dinner you need to have another bake sale you need to have another yard sale you need to do this and you need to do that. Why? Because they're thieves. Amen. Amen. You see, a man's sight depends on what's inside of him. Uh -huh. And what he depends on the condition of their heart. For example, if we like a person a lot, we seldom see their faults. But when we don't like a person a whole lot, we look for every single thing that they say, do, or act wrong. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right, Bishop. That's right. I, you know, I, I, I've seen folk get upset because someone came in the church, sat down, and crossed their legs. Mm -hmm. Oh, they crossed their legs. <laughs> 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 what? Yeah. What? You know, sometimes you just try to figure out where some of this stuff comes from. Or, and you know what? Here's another thing. I love it when folk come around in the church telling everybody what they ought to do and what they need to do to make the church better. And then when you ask them for some money in order to do what they told you to do, they're looking at you like they're crazy. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, like you're crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so then I'm thinking, okay, well, they must be like, they must have that spirit of Judas. <laughs> And I watch him closely because they must be a thief. Because uh -huh. any man that's not willing to, willing to put their money where their mouth is, they ain't worth two cents anyway. That's right. That's right. That's right. Did anyone hear what Sister Betty said today when she started talking about the needs for the children's Christmas party? I did. Did, did anyone hear what she said? Listen closely to what she said. I need the church's help with the gift cards. Mm -hmm. and listen what she said. I got the food. I got the gift baskets. I got the, the. Wait a minute. Sister Betty hasn't come to my office and asked for a check for anything. She didn't ask for anything. But all I heard her say was, that's covered, this covered, this covered, that's covered, and all I need is your help in this. And then there was some folks sitting around here looking all smiling, like, what? I got to do what? Yeah, See, yeah. we got to get off that thing. And then there's some other folks that say, well, I want to know why you didn't, the bishop didn't authorize us to go to Walmart. Because I ain't going to Walmart because I may have to preach against something that they're doing. And if we're always dependent on them, when they, after I preach that, they cut us off, then we're going to be looking sad. But if we never go back, it, uh, okay. yeah. Okay. Amen. 
No one called, and I, and I was just sitting back, just kind of observing. I was just saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. People got quiet. Mm-hmm. We're going to leave that alone. No, that's right. Amen. We're going to leave it alone. Real. We're going to leave it alone. Real. Amen. Okay, quickly. Let's go to Acts chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Because some of us, in the act of giving, have the same attitude like Ananias and Zachariah. <laughs> Sister Betty, you want to take that for me? Acts chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Well, we get good class participation today. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, Sapphira? Sapphira. Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession mm-hmm. and kept back part of the price. His wife also knowing of it and brought a certain part and laid it at, at the apostles' feet. Check it out. Malachi 3 8. Where would a man rob God and tithes and offerings, right? What about just not giving it all? He's lying about it. Mm. When you go to God and you say, God, well, you know I don't have it, but you know you do have it. Yes. Uh, yes. And you don't give it. Yes. There's yes. a problem. Yes. 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 Amen. Right. Exactly. I would rather for someone to come forth and say, I just don't have it at all. And really not have it. But those are the ones that give anyway. I will rejoice if someone said and reached in their pocket and all they had was a penny and dropped that in the offering box. That's a rejoice in the kingdom of God as if someone dropped a million dollars in the offering box. It means the same to God. Because remember, God doesn't have a need for any of our money. But when you come forth and tell God that you don't have it and you know in your heart that you do have it, you have the Ananias syndrome. You got that syndrome where you don't want to give what you're supposed to give according to how God God has blessed you. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Right. Gonna leave it alone. Yeah. We're gonna leave it alone because now I want to talk about the attitude of Barnabas. Mm-hmm. Quickly, someone, let's all go to chap- Acts chapter 4, verses 36 and 37. We get some out of this? Amen. 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 It's because I'm giving some examples and I'm not putting anyone in a category. But if you find yourself yeah. in a category, oh my yeah. God. Hey, yeah. hey, you put yourself there. That's right. And God will lead you out. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this treaching thing. <laughs> Sister T, would you like to read that one for us? Acts chapter 4, verses 36 and 37. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being as which which is being interpreted the son of consolation, Mm. a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. My God. Having all the land, he sold it, and then took the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Anybody see a 10% there? Mm -hmm. What what did he give the apostles? Look over to your neighbor and say all. all. Look over to your other neighbor and say he gave it all. all. He, didn't say, he, didn't, he didn't say 10%. He said all of it. And they laid it at the apostles' feet. Now can you think of what we could do in the kingdom of God if we all had an attitude like Barnabas? If we went back home and we got rid of some of that stuff that we had just laying around. I mean, I, I stuff that I just need to clear out of my house, that I just need to get rid of. I got stuff that we just need to unpack and release. We got things that we just need to get rid of. And I'm talking about, and it just seems like it's piling up, and you get a little bit more, and you pack up more stuff, and you move it around. It is time for us to be givers. Amen. Like Barnabas. Amen. And I'm not advocating that you go take all your money and lay it at the feet of the apostle. Because some of the apostles, but you may see that sucker going to Hawaii. <gasps> not our apostle, but there's some other ones, brother, that be gone, they'll be on that first flight. <laughs> yeah. Right 
take off running. <laughs> but why did Barnabas do this good deed? Mm -hmm. He had a different attitude towards the spirit of giving. Now, some of us have the attitude like the poor widow. Quickly, go to Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. We have the beautiful sister Via Lobos back there. We're going to ask her to read when she gets there. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Twelve forty-one to forty-four. Yes, Mark chapter twelve, verses forty-one through forty-four. <coughs> opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but the poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasure than all of the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. May God add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and believers of his word. Do I need to say anything else? <laughs> this is so easy. This is so easy to teach. Because this is not Mike here. See, if I take self out of the way and let the Holy Spirit do his thing, all I had to do was the research to find the scriptures and what set me on this thing was my barber. And the barber that works in it with them was telling me that this giving thing was all wrong. And I said, brother, no, how you've been taught is all wrong. Jesus just said that she gave out of her poverty and all that she had to live on. She gave greater than the ones that was putting bigger money in. See, we got to change this mentality thing. It don't take a lot. In order to start having a better attitude towards giving, the first thing you have to put into practice is giving. Uh -huh. And it doesn't have to be a lot in order for God to increase it to do what he needs to do with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it. All you have to give is a quarter, and that's what you put in. God is going to rejoice over that. I'm going to rejoice over that. Loving arms is going to rejoice over that. Because guess what? That's 25 cents we didn't have before. Amen. Come on. And if we spend it right, or let Sister Betty do all of our shopping with it, we're going to get a whole lot of bargains for 25 cents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sister Betty coming here with a pack of candy for 25 cents. I'm talking about Snicker bars. <laughs> Come on, look what I found on sale with a coupon. <laughs> but I want you to understand what is about your attitudes towards giving. Are you like the young rich ruler? Are you like Judas? Are you like Ananias and Zechariah? Are you like Barnabas? Are you like the poor widow? What about King David? Oh. Oh, King David. What about King David? King David was bad. He had all this land, all these things. He had the best clothes, the best of everything. But he still was kind of a stingy giver. When it came to giving back to the kingdom of God, he didn't want to give. And he never really wanted to follow God's instructions about giving or anything. David was just... Gunslinger. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes you yeah, just gotta follow yeah. the leader. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say, you know, there's just some things that we're gonna do. And there's one thing that I love that I love about being in this ministry and how we do things. Uh -huh. When we put together projects and we put together things, we don't really come out and talk about the money part uh, aspect of it. Yeah, if, right. if a member has a has a vision, they run with it. Mm -hmm. And today was like the very first time that Sister Betty was like, you know what? 
Pastor, I'm going to let everybody know and everybody can do what they're going to do. Amen. And if they can't do anymore, we got to see. That's what I love about it. it. doesn't feel, when we have a church meeting, doesn't it feel good that we can come together and have a church meeting and the last issue on the list is talking about money. And then when we get to that point, we give everybody the layouts and the printouts of what we, what was spent, where it was spent, how much we took in, and if we're in the black or if we're in the red, and everyone goes home and we don't worry about it. I like that thing. Amen. Amen. It's our attitude towards giving, because as long as we have to give, then we're doing the work of the Lord. Amen. I don't want to have an attitude like the young rich ruler. I don't want to have an attitude like Judas. Ananias and Zachariah. I don't want to have a, 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 an attitude. I want to have more like a Barnabas attitude. Mm -hmm. That the more that I have, the more that I can give. I'm looking around the house right now at things that we can just give away. My wife was talking about that the other day at Thanksgiving. We had my daughter made so much macaroni and cheese. We were looking for containers to put in there. And the first thing my wife was saying is, who can we give something, some stuff away to? Christmas at our house is not about what the kids can get. We, we send the children through and look for stuff that they no longer want, that they no longer play with. Well, Mike is a little bit destructive with his toys. But Peyton had toys that, that that's when she was a little girl and she was able to pass on to her brother. Amen. 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 It all starts at home and what we're doing. And it all starts at when we're little, teaching our children to give. Give of our time, our talents, and our treasures. Amen. Some folks think that all the time. You know, I thank God for Pastor Bowden. Because every Wednesday, I know the church is going to get back and then the trash is going to get taken out. I don't have to think about it. It's automatic. It's already done. That, that's, a, that, that's giving. Amen. Elder Rogers put together the, the, the Sunday school lessons. Folks don't understand that just to be a teacher, you got to try to... Uh, you yourself the questions or trying to anticipate the questions that the students may come and ask you so that you can be prepared. You can tell folks that ain't prepared. Let me get back to you on that. Yeah. They, ain't, they, ain't, they, ain't, they, ain't, they ain't been thinking about it. They probably opened up the Sunday school book on the way to church that morning. <laughs> so our attitude towards giving of our time, our talents, and our treasures. Elder Kevin coming up here singing. That brother can hold a note. I know sometimes I'll be walking through the house trying to practice on a song and I'm just saying, my wife wish I would. Shut up. <laughs> she come running out of the bedroom with her iPod on with a little thing sticking in there. Oh, no. Yeah. You know, I probably would sing better if I had an iPhone, though. It would help me get in the tune. See, I'm glad we're on this subject of giving. Amen. Come on, Yeah, right. <laughs> I may not be right, but it's tight. <laughs> Sleep. No, but seriously, I was looking at that the other day. I was just sitting there watching the. the I was watching a little thing. I said, "You know what, God? I, I want you to bless me and bless the ministry that so all of the ministers and associate ministers and the people who do the labor in the kingdom Amen. will have a pad." Amen. That's what I'm asking God for. I'm believing that He's going to do it. Y'all ain't happy. I'm believing that everyone's going to have a pad. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. I'm shouting. <laughs> I got mine already. You know? Yeah. So, we, so, we, so we're, moving, we're moving along. 2012. Amen. I hope, I hope folks haven't thought that, we, that we've lost the vision of the church. And in 2012, the, the architectural designs were hanging up all over here. Amen. Because whenever we walk around, I want us to take a look at where we're going. What God is preparing us for. The expansion next door is one thing, but God has something greater yeah, yeah. in store for Love and Arms Outreach Ministries. Amen. God has something greater for the GMAP radio Amen. station. God Amen. has something greater for Real Men, Real Women Ministries. Amen. God has Amen. something greater for Amen. each and every single one of us that's standing here today. Why? Because our whole attitude towards giving and commitment, I pray that this month has taken a change. Amen. Amen. What are you committed to? That's why I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm. I'm not gonna beat anyone up. I'm not gonna beg folk when we have our shut-ins on December 9th. What are you committed to? Don't be here that night. We'll be praying for you. We'll be worshiping. We'll be shouting and all that other stuff. But then out of that, deep down inside, you'll be sitting at home beating up yourself, going, "What am I committed to?" Because if I could tell you, it was an all-night after party. Come on, somebody. Oh, you know the ones we used to go to back in those days. Oh Lord, we hey hey hey. The roof. The roof. Yeah, yeah. It'd be 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Be up there I, you know, I have no idea in the world what was wrong with me. 3 o'clock in the morning running around talking 
my son the root. And they still play that thing. <laughs> 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 Y'all know what I'm saying? The roof is on fire. We don't need that water. Let the roof really be on fire. Y'all be up in there singing, y'all don't need no water. <laughs> I heard my good friend Elton talking to the Elder, Elder Rogers today, talking about, oh, I remember y'all, oh, no, I know the bishop way back in the day, and I was like, man, let that rest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you knew back in the day is back in the day. I'm a new preacher in Christ. I rebuke that right now in the day. Yeah. See, the devil will come have somebody creep that up in there. Yeah. Remember when? Hell no, I don't. <laughs> oh, Mike, you know, you got to remember Cynthia. I have no idea who she is. Right the only girl I know with the name that start with C is Cheryl. And I can mess that up and say Christine if I want to. I'm still good to go. <laughs> so Pastor Bo was with us the other day, and I called my wife the little name that I called her. I said, hey, Christine. And the other day, he said, who, who are you talking to? You, you, who's that? I was like, Cheryl, it's Christy. That's what I call her. I, everyone else call her Cheryl. I call her Chris. That, that's between me and her. I call her Chris. Y'all ain't got to be walking around there. See, that's how you guys see. You guys got to know how to peep that. Some other nigga will start calling him Chris. The next thing he's going to hear is... <laughs> you know, you got to be real. You got to be real. You got to be real. Gotta be real. <laughs> Did we get something about the attitudes and giving? Amen. Don't be like the young, rich ruler. Don't be like Judas, just a thief. Don't be like Ananias and Zachariah, just, just liars. Be like the widow. Be like the widow. Give. Now let me also say this. I am not one that will advocate that if you have a list of bills, that you start taking from your bills to give to the church. That's not what I'm saying. Pay your bills first. Come on, somebody. Amen. Pay your bills first. Amen. Well, my job as your pastor, as your leader, is to show you don't go and create bills that you don't need. Right. Don't go out there around there and get a, a $10,000 credit card limit with, with, with 18, 19, 23% limit on there. Mm -hmm. Don't go out there and buy a brand new car at 19% interest. Don't go out there and, 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 and do some of the craziest things that I've seen people do. Amen. And then come to the church when you've done all that craziness and then you don't have anything to pay your utilities with and you come running to be a burden on the church. There are folks that come to church for not receiving the word of God but seeing what they can get out of the church. What are you committed to? We don't have folks like that here at Loving Arms Outreach Ministries. We don't. Because if we do, we will rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus oh, right where they Amen. Because we want to lift people up, Amen. build people up. Amen. And people are going to be coming to us for a whole host of things. Be ready for 2012. Be ready for 2012. Because they're coming. And they're coming in great, great ways. I need mean, every single elder, every single young person, every single... Your son sang today. Yes, he did. That was a blessing Amen. to my soul. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Man, it just, sounded good. He sound, yeah, he sounded, good. sounded like me. <laughs> he sounded good. He sounded. I started grabbing him and giving the microphone. So yeah, bro, that, that roll too. And I love him to death. You see how he he he, he forgot a couple of words and bounced and just kept going. Yes. Like yes, come on, yes. come on, just give God some praise for the man over there. We have to encourage him. Make sure we put him in the program to sing. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Well, he got a part of the program for him to sing, we're going to make one up. <laughs> <laughs> Our hearts and minds clear. Amen. We want to go directly into communion. Um, all the elders come take your places on today. Let's just give God some praise. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of scriptures there. Take them home tonight. Read over them again. And I want you to do a self-conviction. Find out who you are and those people that we described here this morning. And if you can do better, be better. Come on, somebody. One more time. Give God some praise.